Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Monday. It's time for a five by five. This is where I take five subjects related to magic. I spend five minutes talking about each subject and then move on to the next subject. It's quick, it's snappy. You never know what you're going to get. And today we're going to be doing another one of the uh, slight tutorial specials. Uh, the first one we did was on forces with cards. That was very well received. The second one we did was on... Um, uh, controls with cards. Today we're doing coin vanishes. Five coin vanishes you might not have seen before. I'm not going to go into finger palm vanishes. I'm not going to go into classic palm vanishes. I'm not going to go in retention pass vanishes or anything like that. I'm going to go through five vanishes that you might not have seen before that are really cool and well worth learning. Uh, I, I really believe that you should learn as many vanishes as you can. So this is a tutorial special. I'm going to teach you five vanishes that I use in the real world all the time that are perfect for different situations and during the course of the tutorial i'll explain exactly the best place to use this the first coin vanish we're going to look at is a modified french drop and this is the way that i've done the french drop for many 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 years and if you know the classic french drop that's the classic french drop fantastic way to vanish a coin um and you know it's it's been done for years for good reason it's a great way to vanish a coin um the modified way of doing it is like this it's kind of uh showing the coin uh coming in and making it vanish and it's very similar but there's a couple of distinct differences that i think make a big difference with this so let's talk about it so the first thing is the classic french drop is held in this position in sort of a spellbound position and you bring your hand over when your fingers are covering you allow that coin to drop down to that position right that's how the classic french drops done um, you cover like this and then you bring your hand away as if it contains the coin. This stays here and then your hand drops. Okay, that's the classic French drop. Um, this is taken from a different angle. So this is taken from this angle here, like this. Okay, so it's held almost uh, against the edge of the forefinger with the thumb. Now holding it in this position, you can still drop it and it'll still drop into finger palm. So there's no difference in terms of allowing it to drop, but um, but I actually prefer that look. Um, and then when you vanish it, when your fingers come over, notice I keep my fingers open for the uh, right up until the last second. So my fingers come over, my fingers stay open, and then as my fingers close, I drop the coin. So from this angle, my fingers come in, and as the fingers close, that's when the coin drops, and that's when I take the coin away. And so it almost becomes a little bit of a retention vanish because you see that coin right up until the very last second. Now, a couple of things about making this vanish deceptive. The first thing is, and this is one of the big mistakes I see people make when they do the classic French drop, is they, make a, they do this and they worry about holding a coin secretly in their hand. So when they come to take the coin, they make a fist like that and they drop their hand down to the table. Or even worse, they do this. Um, and you see it in actors in movies, they kind of do this sort of thing. Notice with the classic French drop or with this version that I'm going through with you now, notice my hand doesn't move. So I come over to take the coin, my hand stays in this position like this. Now I look at this hand and I focus my attention on this hand. And when everyone else's attention is focused on this hand, then this hand can move out the way. Because the problem is if I move this hand too early, everyone's attention is gonna go there. Even if I move it slowly, everyone's attention is gonna go over there. Imagine I've got a frame of action right here around my head and the coin is being displayed right there inside the frame of action. What happens is when I take the coin, I'm gonna shift the frame of action over to this point over here. When the frame of action is shifted over here, this hand drops. And the reason I look over here is because that's the best way to focus people's attention to this hand. If I did the vanish like this and looked over here and then made it vanish, it's a lot more deceptive than looking down here at where the coin actually is, right? So you wanna look at where the coin is meant to be. So again, it's taken from this angle. You look here, you come over, your fingers are open. You close your fingers at the last second. This hand stays here and then drops down naturally when everyone looks over here and then you do the vanish. So that's the modified French drop. Very easy to do. Remember, you just do that. Practice that about 20 times. That's your secret move. Practice that about 20 or 30 times, just allowing the coin to drop. Then practice actually taking the coin about 20 or 30 times. Just come in, take the coin, come in, 
take the coin. So you know what it's meant to look and feel like. Because when you do the vanish, which is like that, it should look exactly the same as when you actually take the coin. There should be no difference between actually taking the coin and between doing the, the vanish. It should look exactly the same. This, I've been doing this since I was about 18, 19 years old. Now, I talked about this first in uh, an ebook called Born a Freak that I bought out many, many years ago. It's called The Slide Vanish, and it's a very easy way of getting a retention on a coin vanish. So in other words, I'm just allowing that coin to slide down my fingers and into the hand at which point it vanishes. It just literally slides down into my hand and then vanishes. Now let's talk about how that works. Now you start off with the coin almost in a classic palm position. And you're not classic palming the coin, but it starts off in an open classic palm position. Now what's going to happen here is you're going to allow that coin to drop down your fingers like this. So the coin just slides down your fingers. And that happens by tilting the hand downwards. So that's kind of your secret move. The hand just tilts downwards and the coin just slides down the fingers like this, okay? Now the positioning of this left hand is very important. You're gonna have the left hand held open in front of you and the right hand fingers rest right there in the center of the palm. So that when the coin slides down, it apparently slides down into this hand. But in reality, it's staying in a fingertip rest. Uh, fingertip rest is when the coin is held here at the tips of the fingers. It's a great grip to hold a coin in because you can very easily go to thumb palm, you can flip it back and go into finger palm, or you can push it directly into classic palm, which are the three main palms. Oops, there you go. So it's here, it drops down. Now watch what happens when it slides down like this. The left hand is going to turn over and notice the thumb pushes against the forefinger. It's gonna turn over to grab the coin. Now, as it comes away, all that's, it's not really doing anything, it's not grabbing anything. But as it comes away, the right hand just curls in, it's just doing that. So the right hand isn't moving the coin into any position, it's just rotating backwards like this. So you allow the coin to slide. That's really important you do it all in one move. So you don't want to go slide, wait, turn, wait, rotate. It's all one move. It's all like that. Now, the reason it has a retention to it is because this coin moving down causes retention. They just, their eyes fill in the gap and it makes it look like it just ends up in this hand. Now, the nice thing about this move is it is completely angle proof. So what I mean by that is if I do it from this angle, you don't see anything. If I do it from this angle, you don't see anything. If you were behind me looking down, and I've taught this in lectures and I've had people walk all the way around me. If you were looking me down, you wouldn't see anything. It just looks completely angle proof from every angle. So it literally just slides in and then you come up here and you just take it and you just vanish the coin. And again, notice the eyes are looking up here, exactly the same as the modified French drop. It's not like I'm looking down here at the coin. I'm looking up here at where the coin is meant to be. Okay, but it's very, very simple. You just slide it down, it hits here, and then you rotate your hand. But it's really important that you rotate. If that thumb isn't there, you can see what's going on. So you rotate, make that grabbing motion as this hand turns in. Just practice this. Both hands rotate. This hand rotates like this. This hand rotates like this. You combine the actions and it looks like it's vanished. Okay, so let's have a look at a way of actually using Goshman Pinch to get the coin into Goshman, uh, Goshman Pinch or Tenkai Pinch, right? So um, this is what it looks like. You show the coin and you just come here and you vanish it. Then you can shake and you can make it come back. How'd that look, Jack? That look okay? I don't know, how'd you do it? Ooh, there you go. You just do that. Okay, so that is the vanish. Now, let me explain how what's happening here, okay? What's happening is you're putting the coin into Goshman Pinch or Tenkai, uh, Tenkai Pinch. Now, normally, when you do this move, um, how, how you're taught how to do it in all the books is this. You're taught to hold the coin between your thumb and your fingers and rotate it here, and then the little finger grips that coin. That's Goshman Pinch, by the way. Goshman Pinch, is, or Tenkai Pinch, is pinching the, the coin in that position. And then it, your hand looks empty. Um, and, and your little finger is holding that coin in that position. It's a nice grip to use because you can, you can um, retrieve the coin very easily. 
right? But what most people do is they will take the coin and they will roll it around the back of their fingers and pinch the coin there like that. So if you're going to do a vanish, you have to vanish the coin using whatever method, keeping it in this hand. And then as you open up the hand, you've got to put that into Goshman Pinch. So it's kind of like a two-phase thing. It's like, right, I'm going to do a vanish and now I'm going to push it into Goshman Pinch. I'm going to do a vanish, now I'm going to push it into Goshman Pinch. Um, the way that I do it, I'm not doing the vanish. Everything's happening at the same time. Now, in order to do this, you're going to put the coin into Goshman Pinch in a slightly different way. <coughs> what you're going to do is you're going to put the coin in that position. It's on your middle finger and your ring finger. And what's going to happen here is you're going to put your thumb onto the right edge of the coin, and the ring finger and the little finger are going to come over the ring finger is going to go on the top of the left edge of the coin. The little finger is going to go underneath the left edge of the coin. And then as soon as they're gripping it, these fingers come around the front, come around the top, sorry. So it's here, here. Now notice the thumb is here. If the thumb's not there, it would be very impossible to do. So the thumb holds this coin as this hand grips it in the left hand edge. So again, the thumb is here. The ring finger comes along the top, the little finger goes at the bottom, and then these fingers just come over the top. Can you see that there, Jack? Yep. There, there. That's exactly what's happening. Here, here. Now, if I just did that vanish in front of people, it would look very impressive. So there's two ways to make this deceptive. Now, the first way is to give it a shake, uh, because if I shake that, that as I as I do the vanish, if I shake it, it kind of looks like it disappears off the hand. So you could just say, look, I'm going to shake this coin, and as I shake it, it vanishes. However, that's not what we're trying to go for here. We're trying to make it look like we pick the coin up in this hand and it just vanishes. We pick the coin up in this hand and it just vanishes. Now the way around that is to come over with the left hand and take the coin away, apparently, but you're not taking anything. <coughs> you're pantomiming this. You're pretending to take the coin but really you're not taking anything now this hand does a backwards and a forwards motion um, to make it look uh, you know it does a backwards and a forwards motion but that happens as you come to take the coin as I come backwards my thumb comes on the coin and I start the vanish as I come forwards my hand comes over as if it can as if it takes the coin this hand is left with the fingers open like this uh, or the, you know, the hand palm up. So the whole thing looks like that. Now you do it right, you get a nice retention. You do it right, you get a really nice retention. So it's, look, I'm going to show you a trick with the coin. Watch the coin. Now, Goshman Pinch, this is not the video about what to do with Goshman Pinch, but there's so much you can do with it. So for example, I've got a whiteboard marker here. Um, if I do this vanish and I take this uh, this coin, and I tap and I make the coin go here, obviously it's still in Goshman Pinch. I can then take the cap off and I can shake it out the lid. And Goshman Pinch allows me to do that very, very easily. So I can do the vanish, take the pen, tap, and I can take the lid off the pen and shake the coin out. So that is Goshman Pinch. That is a way of doing the vanish, doing a Goshman Pinch or a Tenkai Pinch vanish um, with a coin and a nice way to retrieve it. Okay, so the next one is, and I don't see many people doing this. I use the coin roll an awful lot in my uh, in my work. And by the way, if you want to learn some amazing work with a coin roll or a steeplechase flurry, then go check out Kyona Harbottle. He's got some amazing stuff on it. But um, one thing that I've done since I was a kid is I've done a vanish as part of a steeplechase flurry. Um, so I'm, I'm doing this and I really, when I'm doing coin magic, I love doing this. For me, it's the same thing as doing a fancy shuffle with a pack of cards. It shows people that, uh, you know, you're a professional and you know what you're doing. And so I do the steeple chase for a lot uh, in my coin work, especially right at the beginning. Um, and I, I will throw a vanish in like that at some point and it looks very deceptive. Now, if you know the coin roll or the steeplechase flourish, all that's happening is when you get to this point where you would take the coin around, put it onto your thumb and bring it back around again, all you're going to do is you're just going to not actually take it around. Instead, you're just going to do that. And you're just going to pinch the, the coin between the little finger and the ring finger. It's not quite a Goshman pinch, but it's kind of close. And I'll vanish the coin like that. And what I'll do is as I do it, I'll turn my hand over as if I'm dropping the coin into this hand. 
So it looks like this. It looks like I'm just dropping the coin in the hand and you get a nice little retention of that coin going into the hand. And then vanish the coin. Now you can't retrieve it very easily from this position because it's kind of in a full pinch. So what I'll do at that point is I'll transfer it into my left hand on the offbeat. So once I've vanished the coin, so there, there's the vanish. Once I've vanished the coin, um, I'll just bring my hands together and that coin will rest into my left hand finger palm as I just kind of straighten up my fingers like that and then I'll rotate my hands inwards and the coin ends up in left hand finger palm. So in full speed, I'm doing a steeplechase flurry, I'm doing whatever it is, whatever routine I'm doing. I then do the vanish, vanish the coin, and then I transfer it into the left hand, at which point I can do whatever I want with it. But it's just the idea, if you already do a steeplechase flurry, if you already do a coin roll, having this moment here where you can pinch the coin as you apparently drop it into this hand, it becomes very, very deceptive. It's a really nice vanish. So uh, I don't know the origins for that. I That was one of the first things I ever learned. I think Brad Henderson taught me that back when I was 18 years old. It's a very uh, old move. I've just done it my entire life. As I say, if you want to look into some really nice sequences with the steeplechase flurry, you definitely want to look at Kai and a Harbottle. But this particular vanish is, uh, is as old as the hills, and it's a really nice way to vanish a coin. Okay, so the final uh, coin vanish we're gonna be looking at is uh, using the back thumb palm. This is technically not a coin vanish, it's a coin steal. Um, but I wanted to go through it with you because it's something I came up with for a three coins across routine that at some point I'll publish on the metrics. And uh, it's a really strong routine, but this is uh, how I make the first coin go across. And uh, there's so many different ways of getting into back thumb palm. You know, uh, one of the best ways that I've used for many, many years is Balance Palm by, uh, uh, is it Jason Dean? Uh, I think it might be Jason Dean. Uh, Balance Palm. But um, uh, for, for how I wanted to construct these coins across, I needed a different way to get into it. And uh, this is a great way because normally with Back Thumb Palm, by the way, th Back Thumb Palm, just so you know, that's normal Thumb Palm. Back Thumb Palm is holding the coin behind your hand. That's Back Thumb Palm. And most people get into it by doing a vanish and just pushing the coin through the fist like that. Jason Dean, I'm sure it was Jason Dean, he had the idea of showing the coin like this and kind of uh, bringing it into balance palm like that. So it's balancing on the side of the thumb and then you can go into the position immediately. My way of doing back thumb palm is to show the coin in the hand, make a fist. And then the idea is that you're gonna make the coin jump from over here over to here. You throw it up in the air and then you, uh, you catch it in the hand like that. That's my way of doing back thumb palm. And uh, I, it, as I say, technically it's a steal, but I wanted to go through this with you guys. So what's happening here is you're showing the coin in this hand, you're making a fist and you're turning your hand over. Now as you turn your hand over, this is being pushed into heel clip, um, like that, as if you're gonna do a Vernon steal. So what you don't want to do is do what I see a lot of people doing, which is like making a, uh, you know, like making a pig's ear of it like this. You wanna just literally have it in one motion so it looks like you're just making a fist. So all I'm doing here is I'm uh, showing the coin, it's dropping to my fingertips and I'm pushing that back into heel clip. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring this hand up like this with the coin in heel clip. I'm gonna bring the hand up in front of my face and point to the, uh, point to the, hand, with this, uh, point to the hand with this finger. And as I do that, it's automatically gonna go into back thumb palm because if you see here, as I come up, it immediately goes into back thumb palm, at which point I bring my hand up in front and I point. So it's here like this, okay? So I'm pointing here and the angles are great because this coin is pointing directly at me. And as long as I see that coin pointing directly at my eye line, I know everything's fine. Now I can vanish the coin at that point if I want to, no problem. However, what I'm going to do is bring this hand up like this. So, uh, and this is an old uh, David Stone technique, or David Stone was the first person I saw do this. You're gonna apparently throw the coin up in the air, and what's gonna happen is you're gonna bring your hand down. This is gonna come through the thumb hole here and land in the hand. And uh, it looks really pretty. It looks like the coin just appears right there in the hand. Looks very, very good. Uh, because they see the coin here, they can't think of any possible way that you could have stolen that coin out. They see this hand empty, they see this hand empty and then boom, they see the coin appear over here. It looks really good. Uh, and really that's just a knack thing. As you bring your hand down, it's just gonna do that. It's just in slow motion, it's kind of doing that. Uh, the key thing is it should just look like it appears. What you don't wanna do is have that thumb wildly out at the end because if you do this, 
and you have it appear and that thumb sticking out like that, it looks not as deceptive. But if you have the hand empty like this and then you just, whoop, there you go, that's me trying to do it slowly. And then we know where the coin's gone now, vanished onto the floor, here it is. So, mm. there you go, let's try that again. So you're here like this, right? You just want to do it over and over again. You don't want to have the coin, the thumb out like that. You want to just have the thumb in the same position. So the steel is here into heel clip and then steal it as you come up. And then you bring your hand over, you throw, and then you just, you just appear it. Let's do that again. You're here, you're here, here, and you just appear it as it appears like that, okay? So that's a way of making a, com a coin disappear using back thumb palm. There you go, guys. That's another five by five in the bag. Do me a favor, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you like the tutorial specials? If you do like the tutorial specials, let me know what you'd like me to do and on next. I mean, somebody suggested um, um, uh, some other stuff with cards, which is fine. Just let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see another tutorial special, more than happy to do it. Don't forget, the Netrix has over 30 vanishes in their slight school. So if you like these five, there's another 25 that you can learn on the Netrix, and they're all taught in, in more detail. But uh, go check out the Netrix if you want to. It's www.thenetrix.com. I'll be back again very, very soon with another video. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.